So the Syracuse Open is coming up a couple days from now. What are you what are you kind of doing to prepare for the for yeah. first round? Uh, so I've got I'm in a little bit of a weird situation. So the last so the second day is at Van Buren. It's like a wide open uh, course, pretty much. There's this one hole that it's a shot over a pond, and it's uh, it's it's a pretty easy shot for me. But I ended up going one. Long story short, I put I've never put a disc in the water, and my last practice round put two discs in there. I'm in a little bit of a predicament because it's my favorite disc. It's this utility disc. Uh, and it helps me a lot on that course. I accidentally threw it in the pond because of the wind, and it's out near the middle. I can't get to it. So uh, I need to go check one of the stores here, see if they've got one, and I can get it. But other than that, um, I've got a league night tomorrow that I'm going to go to that's at that course. Uh, and then Thursday, Friday, or today, yeah, yeah, today and tomorrow, I'm really just going to go out to the fields um, right behind the, my house here. There's a, there's a school uh, wide open field. So I'm just going to do some field work, just go out there and throw, just stay loose, pick some targets, work on some different shots. Um, yeah, it's all about just staying loose. And then one of my big things is I always have this issue, and I'm going to do it different this time. I never get to the course early enough to go out and throw. I need to go play like nine holes beforehand competitively and get my body moving. Because I can't tell you how many times I've jumped into a tournament and six, seven, eight holes in, I'm like five over and then the rest of the round I go like, you know, seven, eight under. And I'm like, okay, you know, I gotta like, I just have to warm up. Yeah. I was going to ask you, how so, does that work warming up? Cause there's not like a practice range. Is like anywhere to like toss other than like actually playing some holes. Yeah. Yeah. So you're, you're able to go out and play the course. You can get out there as early as you want. You can go play both courses. Like Saturday, there's one, it'll be clay East and clay West. So it's, it's two holes or two courses in one day. Uh, yeah, you're allowed to go out and play. Um, it's at uh, it's at Wessel Road there. Like, yeah. so there's like a there's a couple football fields. There's open soccer fields. Like, you can go throw there if there if you want. Um, yeah, and uh, um, they're doing it a little different this year. Usually, they had the entire field, so every division. It's like 270 people had just on on one on the you know both of these courses at one time. They're splitting it up now, so like just the open divisions, like the upper ones, they're going to be on these courses, which is only like two divisions, I think. And then everybody else is at two different, completely different courses being, it's basically like two separate tournaments being run at mm-hmm. one time. Um, but it's grown so much. I mean, we're playing for $10,000 in added cash, so it's, it's pretty wild. Uh, but yeah, for me, really, it's just doing a lot of like, I got armband stretches I'm doing here. I'm doing a lot of stretching, go for a run trying to get my uh, mental state right and, um, you know, just play my game. I know that the it's what I got to do and just got to go out next Yeah, game. so do you think there's, like, some advantages just being local and having played these courses before compared to some of the mm. the others coming in? Like, I don't, I don't know how much it really changes, yeah, like, knowing, obviously, like, the holes are probably shaped quite a bit more than, like, a lot of golf holes are, like, you know? Yeah. Yeah, one thing I noticed a lot from last year, uh, the second round, I got I was the only local on my card, and we were kind of like middle of the pack. Um, There's two guys from New Hampshire and one guy from Vermont, and they met through disc golf, and they all got like an Airbnb and shit and came down. But they were talking about the two courses on the first day, and he's like, I wish that we had gotten out here a day earlier to go play it because the way that it's lined up, it reminded them basically of their home course, but like reversed. So he's like, I played it a little differently. Um, there is an advantage to being a local. Um, obviously, just those are the courses that we play all the time. So it's, you know, you know, some secret lines and some like, you know, things that will work that maybe other players wouldn't. But at the same time, it's like uh, that first round I played last year, there was a guy from Buffalo who had never played that course. And he went out and he threw putters and mids, like just like the lowest disc. He shot like 13 under. And I sat there and watched him, and I was like, never played the course before. And I'm like, holy yeah. shit. I'm like, I played that course a hundred times, and I think I shot like two under. I was like, all right, this is nuts. So, yeah, it's a, yeah, there's there's little advantages, but there's also pros and cons. That's kind of how it was uh, in the, the AIM 
last chance at Winona just because, like, me and Steve are members. And then mm-hmm. there was Michael, who he played a practice on last week, but that was the first time he ever played the course. And, you know, there's some of those holes that are, like, right. he had in his head. But then he was also, like, because it was very clear. It was, like, he's the one that had the shot. The other two of us were, were back. We didn't. And he missed it by a stroke, which sucked. But then it, it kind of got, when we got Ooh. to the back, he was, like, so what are you guys actually doing? I think it was 11. And he was like, what is the actual play here? Because it's like, it's confusing looking at it. You know what I mean? Because you oh, oh, the, you the end up too five. short. Yeah, yeah, and then yeah, now you yeah. got to hit a weird little punch over a hill and under the trees. And and it's and, and then 13 right. as well is another uh, weird one. They finally yeah. mowed that little yeah, you just take, you take spot high. down in there. Oh, the, the little uh, drainage yeah. area. Okay. And they so they had moved the the black tees right. instead of having them back. They moved them up. I think to just take that out of play, so everybody was just over it because it was it was better. They finally mowed it, but I think they moved it up. But then people were ripping drives. I forgot to tell you this: on twelve, I push. I just block uh, my tee shot. It's that let, kind of like longer par three, like the one seventy. I block my tee shot out right. Go and find it, and it's behind a fucking tree like maybe a foot behind it and i have somewhat of a shot and i'm ready to go hit it you know i'm doing my little practice thing so i can like stop it you know like i was right of the green okay so you have the hill the hill yeah yeah. so like i'm kind of by 11's fairway and i'm like you know you got to do like a little sawed off stop so you don't hit your club and i'm practicing it and all of a sudden here comes Mm -hmm. a ball bouncing up and isn't it mike mckay's ball from back at the turn because he's in the group behind me (laughs) <laughs> and he's like, oh, I'm so, I'm so. He, I don't think he knew it was That's me awesome. until he pulled up, and then I was like, he probably, <laughs> but he probably. You should text him. Be like, no, I talked to him after. Once he on pulled up, I, I did. Yeah, yeah. Oh, okay. But at the time, he didn't know. He's just look. He's like, probably like, what the fuck? I'm, I'm standing literally next to the tree. Yeah. But, but, like, but it was crazy it? though, seeing where That's the funny. Michael that was, that like almost made it, just like how he was approaching some of these holes and. What was it 15 yeah. blew his mind yeah. too it's, with that tree um, in the middle because because steve normally goes to the right of right. it and i was like i don't actually normally go to the left of it and we we did that and you know he was but he was just hitting sure. he had so much control with like cutting and drawing these drives it was <clears throat> no shit yeah we'll have it'll be i'm interested to see who i get matched up with tomorrow because uh steve and steve bailey the guy that runs it for us here uh shut up bailey appreciate you brother um he tries to do with at least the local guys. Like if there's some people in the car, he tries to group us up. If he's like, like me, I'm pretty personable. Um, and like, you know, I, I, I vibe with everybody. So it's, it doesn't matter to me, but one big thing I'm doing different this year uh, that I started doing, or one big thing that I started doing last year for competitive rounds, I can, you can play with music in. So there's even some pro guys that play with like, you know, uh, AirPods in and whatnot. Um, but for me, it's like, I'm very much realized that with my disc golf game and even my golf game is I end up playing either down or up to the level that people are playing with me. So like, if I know that like, there's some people playing shitty on my car that I know I can beat for whatever reason, I like, if I'm not zoned in, I'm like, I'm making dumb shots and dumb decisions. So last year, last year I started playing with music in these bigger ones and i started like you know the people i know i could be i'm blowing them out of the water and the other people that like i you know need to i should be trying to catch i'm playing to that level so um i'm definitely going to be doing that saturday um and then sunday really just depends my i my tea time i'll find out depending on how i shoot both rounds on saturday but uh like i like i said last year i didn't play the best the first round the second round was very windy, so scores were pretty median. I was right in the middle of the pack, right, you know, for cash. So that, that's my that's my goal this year is just to I want to place cash. I think I need to finish like fortieth to get like it's like three hundred to five hundred dollars something like that. So I mean it's it's very very doable, especially on that on uh, that course. I'm hoping if all goes well, um, I know you're gonna try to come out Sunday, so we'll get you on that, and it'll be it'll be a fun ass time. I th- I'm excited. I think I'm more excited for that. For like to have somebody who's never really seen disc golf like in person like that on that scale yeah. to see it and be like oh shit this is like i i think you're gonna be i don't think you'd be hooked and be like oh i'm gonna go buy disc i think you'll genuinely be like okay yeah i see i see the attraction I'll go play around. I see I just, yeah i'm not gonna go buy discs yet but oh 
We'll yeah, so with the, the weather coming in, too, the next few days is supposed to be cool and rainy. Like It's like high, like 60, 65. What, is, like, what adjustments do you kind of make into mm. your game to, you know, with the rain? Sure. Um, for me personally, so the thing, the thing with disc golf, compa- difference from like ball golf is, I mean, golf still, you still play in the rain, right? But there's a certain point where if it's pouring, like golf, you're going to stop. Disc golf, we don't. Unless there's lightning, you play through it. So it could be an absolute fucking monsoon, and I'm standing there, like, just trying to, like, hold a disc. They give you, like, there's starter packs, or uh, there's, like, uh, tournament packs or goodie bags and stuff where they'll give you towels that you can put in your bag and do mm-hmm. that. I need to invest in an umbrella for this weekend. I don't have one, so I need to get one. Um, I have a you, you, I have a stool as well, too. So when, if cards get backed up, you just pop yeah, it out yeah. and just put it on the ground and sit. Um, yeah, it'll be interesting because if it's wet, if it's wet, mean it means that, um, if it's raining, even a little windy, the wooden course is going to play a little more, not high scoring, but people are going to try to attack that more rather than the open holes where you're going to have trouble holding onto the disc. You're going to have trouble. It's not going to fly as much like beef, you know, it's going to move crazy. So, um, yeah, it's one of those things like I, I can't make the adjustment until I get there. But in my mind, I'm playing like there's there's no wind. There's, you know, there's perfect conditions. That's how I try to go into it and then make those minuscule, uh, you know, bigger adjustments that, that are needed. So, I mean, it's one of those things where I'm very adaptive. I know my game. I'll be able to adjust. Yeah. I just, I, if I make it out of day one, I think I'm more nervous the fact I got so many thoughts we have, this is the first time there's a gatekeeper media and then there's Heiser media. I think it is. I don't know. They're actually gatekeeper media does um, with Joe Mez pro is what it's called. Those are the two main film crews for the pro tour for disc yeah. golf. Gatekeeper media is coming to film this along with like another one that's doing like one of the, the second or third round. Um, so it's really interesting cause it's like, not that I'm saying I'm going to do this, but say I, I go out and shoot like a crazy two rounds. If I'm on the lead card of a chase card, like the second or before, dude, I could be like getting filmed and then I'm like, Oh shit, man. Like yeah, yeah. <laughs> I, I won't personally, but I know some of my buddies will. There's a couple of guys around here that can really throw. So it's, it's going to be, it's also just such a cool community. I'm really looking forward to it. It's a whole fun ass weekend there's a big party that they throw to and just get hammered afterwards so you know it'll be a good time thanks for watching today's episode to see more of our content be sure to follow us on instagram tiktok and subscribe on youtube we can be found at basic bogeys on all platforms thanks we hope to see you on the next one